Hello, my name is Bob D. Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. I'm here today to talk about static electricity, uh, this time in terms of the balloon and lightning. Last time I talked about the uh, triple electric effect, where the G2 force, G2 gravity helped move G1 particles from glass to silk, which, uh, which may be part of the answer, but maybe there's more to it. Let's take the case of rubbing the balloon on the wall. This is a comment again. The particle model is a mechanical model. By rubbing the balloon on the wall, you are causing the atoms and molecules of the balloon to scrape against the atoms and molecules of the wall. G1 orbitals in this case can hit each other and scatter. The scattering G1 particles, of course, would go in all directions. You don't know which way they're going to go. Uh, they could uh, pass balloon, the ones released from the balloon may go to the uh, through the balloon and out, and the ones in the wall go backwards through the wall and out. But some of them go uh, from the balloon to the wall and from the wall to the balloon. Because the balloon has too few orbitals or the ability to accept them, uh, some of the G1 particles get trapped in the balloon and hence the balloon gains G1s and becomes negative. Rubbing the balloon on the wall increases the probability G1 orbitals are released and so you have a better chance of the balloon sticking to the wall when you, when you rub the ball the balloon on the wall or, or on some other object. Uh, people often use their hair to do that. But when the balloon sticks to the wall, there must be a force holding the blue balloon there. Once, once you stopped rubbing and the balloon is there, something has to hold, hold it to the wall. And it's not G1 gravity, or, which is our term for Newtonian gravity, because G1 gravity tries to move the balloon down to the floor. With the buildup of G1s in the balloon, the G, G2 gravity is what holds the balloon to the wall. And notice that is a horizontal gravity. Uh, turns out that whether it's G1 or G2, you can have gravity in all directions. Uh, since the Earth dominates, we often think of it as only a vertical gravity, but gravity can happen horizontally. But in this case, you'll notice, uh, and this comes up a little bit later with lightning, that the atoms and molecules of the balloon and the wall, they stay with the balloon and the wall. May not be the case with other, uh, with other static electricity. But then the balloon falls. The materials at the top of the triple electric effect series can not only store more G ones, they can hold them for some period of time. They're non-conductors. All of these materials are basically non-conductors, and they can hold them for a period of time, but it's probably not a stable condition. This is not the normal condition of the balloon. With too many G ones in orbit around the atom, some will eventually hit and move away, and hence you have the balloon discharging automatically losing G1s. When the number of G1s is low enough in the balloon, G1 gravity then becomes stronger than the G2 gravity that holds it to the wall, and the balloon falls. So that's the way the, the balloon discharges itself naturally with too many. The wall, by the way, will gain its some of the G1s back because uh, it has room to accept them. The, as the G1 particle fields uh, surrounds the wall and, and all these G1 particles in the field pass through the wall, eventually some of them will get trapped and things will return to normal in the wall. So charging, charging objects at the top of the triple electric series means adding G1 orbitals. Charging objects at the bottom of the triple electric means losing 
G1 orbitals. Once you have charged two objects, you have changed the balance between the balloon and the wall in this case because there are more that more in one object than the other. The G2 gravity on around them has changed and the two objects set up a field that will move them together much like G1 gravity moves the moon towards the earth. Okay, so let's take a look at lightning, and here is a, uh, a definition of lightning in a uh, thunder by uh, in Wikipedia. And quote, it says the differences in the movement of precipitation, that is, ice particles and uh, ice water molecules, cause collisions to occur. This is the thermals, basically, when the rising ice crystals collide with grapple. Well, there's a new word for you. The ice crystals become negative, positively charged, and the grapple becomes negatively charged. What in the world is grapple? Ice crystals and grapple. Grapple is actually soft hail. That's the definition of that. Uh, are two forms of water, and neither of these are listed in the Tribble Electric series, just like Earth is not listed. In, in that series. Whether they, uh, by hitting or scraping, ice crystals become positive, they lose G1s, and grapple becomes negative, they gain G1s. So in that same one, oh look at that, we got a very nice uh, dynamic. It surprised me, I thought it was going to be a stationary picture. But in the video, we get the actual movement uh, and flow of the positive ice crystals moving up and the yellow grapple moving down. But, but in reality, what you, what you end up with is positive uh, particles up, uh, up here, ice crystals, grapple, ice crystals. They don't show anything here, but notice down at the bottom, you've got positive symbol showing grapple, uh, ice crystal at the bottom. That's just, someone drew that up, that's their idea. The problem is you can get different pictures, although some similarity. This is from the National Severe Storm Laboratory. And as uh, you probably already know, you have the updraft taking uh, uh, warmer air moving up. And then outside of that, you have the colder air moving down. And they show uh, levels of as well. However, positive isn't at the top. Negative is at the top. And this is, this is, uh, uh, this is, this is grapple up here. This is uh, ice crystals, grapple, and so on, positive, negative, all kinds of layers. Why the uh, uh, they put it that way is is not clear, uh, but they both have layers. E even though this the uh, previous one, this this one, oops, that's the wrong direction. Even though this one ends up with positive up by the anvil, this is what's called the anvil. They have negative. Maybe this is their explanation of why lightning is so strange. Okay, this is a picture of lightning, and it's going all over the place. Uh, very intense lightning happening up here, and, and, and very intense lightning happening down there. Uh, so presumably there are, there is a lot of positive or negative. One would suspect. Uh, well, I don't know which way it is. Uh, it, positive here, negative here, neg uh, negative up here, positive down here. It gets very confusing, but you have lightning going all directions. What makes it go this direction? My opinion is the particle model indi would indicate there is a charge uh, of, of positive and negative of, of, of molecules and atoms that have uh, a positive or negative charge here and another one up here and there is a G2 force causing this to move. 
And when you take that position, I mean, you've got these little, little tiny groups of stuff all over the place. And, but you end up with some, a primary path. There's another apparently primary path. So maybe there's layers and maybe there's not. To me, there's just random places of groups of positive charges and negative charges, ice crystals and grapple. Okay, so what's happening at this charge? First thing that happens is you see it. You see the lightning. Wikipedia says the light is caused by black body radiation from plasma. No, no, no. You have to admit, lightning does look a lot like plasma. Where the black body comes from, I don't know. The National uh, Severe Storm Laboratory didn't say. Now, maybe they say someplace, but in that particular article, they didn't tell me. However, the particle models would say, as G2 gravity uh, surrounds atoms and molecules with extra G1s, and other atoms and molecules with fewer G1s, the G2 gravity pushes the atoms and molecules together. Notice in this case, we, we have an atmosphere, an atmosphere that has oxygen, nitrogen, all kinds of dust particles, and uh, whatever else, uh, pollutants up there in the atmosphere. And these are freely moving. The G2 force is a strong force. It's the nuclear binding force, for crying out loud. AI, it can strip the G1 particles off of the atoms, but the atoms are just as, the molecules are just as likely to move as not. So I'm trying to emphasize here that the, the what's happening in lightning could be both but there's no reason to suspect that the atoms and molecules are not moving. G1 particles, G1 particles are released in bursts of G1s with wavelengths in the visible spectrum. That's why you can see it. Think that in one sense, you can think of it as an atom smasher. Only and these are atoms, and these are molecules hitting each other, and bursts of G1 particles come out each time there's a hit. Those bursts come out if they come out in a regular pattern of red green and blue you have light and you'll see them as a, as a color plus they scatter in all directions no matter where you're standing around the lightning whether it's at the north end the south end the east or west you see it which means that these gravity part not gravity g1 particles are coming at you from all directions. After they skip, when they scatter and hit, they're scattering in all directions. And of course, you have the G1 orbitals moving around and around. You don't know which direction they're going when you hit. They scatter. Okay. After the after you see the lightning, you hear it. Uh, Wikipedia is consistent. Uh, they say it's the sudden expansion of plasma clear. That does, seems consistent at least. The National uh, Severe Storm Laboratory says that the energy, energy from the lightning channel, so there's energy in this channel, heats the air to around 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how hot it gets. It's amazing. How does it get so hot? The particle model says that as the G1 particles hit the atoms and the molecules in the air, they can cause them to, to vibrate at a very high, apparently at a very high rate. And they may be hitting from most directions. And in fact, some of the re uh, articles you read on lightning, you'll find that there are leader strokes, what they call leader strokes. Whether these are exactly true or not, I'm not sure. But they can come from both directions. And, and if that's true, you have, you have uh, particle motion coming one way and the other way and, and, and hitting the atoms and they can begin to vibrate. Uh, they also vibrate because the, the, as soon as one moves this way, it hits into something else and they bounce back and forth and get hot. 
That's what we discussed about heat. Vibrating atoms make it hot. When the atoms and molecules collapse, of course, then they expand. I mean, don't forget the expansion. They vibrate at a very high rate, and, and they push themselves apart. And then when the uh, heat source, when the lightning source stops, they collapse, they clap, making a clap of thunder. The specific, it's hard to study lightning as it occurs in nature. You've got very strange things. You've got lightning balls that have been reported uh, that people have seen a lightning ball actually flow through an airplane like it was walking down the aisle of an airplane. But we can study the generation of sparks, for example, using a Van de Graaff generator, but it's not the same as lightning. So you can understand why there's some confusion about how it happens. And, 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 and even in my case, I'm having to explain a bit of what's going on is a little bit uh, difficult because of the information available. But I think the particle model has something to say. So conclusions vary about what exactly is going on. In summary, the particle model, G2 gravity moves the G1 orbitals, the G1 particles which are in orbit and leaves the atoms and molecules of the balloon and wall in place. The, G, the particles move, but the wall itself and the balloon doesn't move. That's in lightning. I mean, that's in uh, static electricity with a balloon and wall. Excuse me. G2 gravity moves the atoms and molecules along with, along with their G, G1 orbitals toward each other. The particle model generates streams of G1 particles with wavelengths in the visible spectrum through the collision of atoms and molecules. At the same time, heat is generated by causing the atoms and molecules to vibrate at a high rate, expand, and collapse. My name is Bobby Hilster, and I am your Particle Model Guru. Tune in next time when I will explain more of the universe using the Particle Model. Thank you for your attention.